today we're going to talk about is ontological ethics. Ontology is a set of concepts and categories in a subject area or domain that shows their properties and the relations between them. So what is ontological ethics? Ontology is the branch of philosophy that studies concepts such as existence, being, becoming, and reality. Ontology is sometimes referred to as the science of being and belongs to the major branch of the philosophy known as metaphysics. Metaphysics is a field of philosophy that is generally focused on how reality and the universe began. An example of metaphysics is a study of God versus the Big Bang Theory. Uncountable by extensions from the philosophical sense, any fundamentals, fundamental principles or rules. Derived from the Greek word beyond meaning duty. The ontology is a category of normative ethical theories that encompasses any theory which is primarily concerned with adherence to certain rules or duties. Consequences do not matter. Intention is irrelevant. I'm acting a certain way only if I act for the right reason. Famous thinkers, proponents, and opponents of ontological ethics. Ontological arguments are arguments for the conclusion that God exists from premises where which are supposed to, to derive from some source other than observation of the world from reason alone. In other words, ontological arguments are arguments from what are typically alleged to be none but analytic, a priori, and necessary premises to the conclusion that God exists. Everything is on the table, and everything needs an argument. Some people say that the religion is one area where you don't need arguments, that faith alone is enough. But philosophers don't take faith for an answer. No one's of the hope we all need to pay attention to these arguments because religion is hugely important. And long time ago, there was a man who argued that God's existence is provable. 11th century French monk Anselm of Canterbury, he offered the deductive argument for the existence of God based on what he understood of the nature of God's being or the definition of God. Because the study of being is called ontology, these arguments and others like it are called ontological arguments. Saint Anselm claims to derive the existence of God from the concept of a being than which no greater can be conceived. Saint Anselm reasoned that if such a being fails to exist, then a greater being, namely, being than which no greater can be conceived, and which exists can be conceived. But this would be absurd. Nothing can be greater than being than which no greater can be conceived. So a being than which no greater can be conceived, God exists. In the 17th century, René Descartes defended a family of similar arguments. For instance, in the fifth meditation, Descartes claimed to provide a proof demonstrating of the existence of God from the idea of supremely perfect being. In the 17th century, René Descartes defended a family of similar arguments. For instance, in the fifth meditation, Descartes claims to provide a proof demonstrating the existence of God from the idea of supremely perfect being. 
Descartes argues that there is no less contradiction in conceiving a supremely perfect being who lacks the existence than there is conceiving a triangle whose interior angles do not sum to 180 degrees. He opposes, since we do conceive a supremely perfect being, we do have idea of a supremely perfect being, we must conclude that a supremely perfect being exists. In the early 18th century, Gottfried Leibniz attempted to feel what he took to be a shortcoming in Descartes' view. According to Leibniz, Descartes' arguments fail unless one first shows that the idea of a supremely perfect being is coherent or that it is possible for there be supremely perfect being. Leibniz argued that since perfection are analyzable, it is impossible to demonstrate that perfections are incompatible. And he concluded from this that all perfections can coexist together in a single entity. There are many people or philosophers who made a criticism about the ontological ethics, and one of those is Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant put forward an influential criticism of the ontological argument in his Critic of Pure Reason. In an analytic proposition, the predicate is contained in its subject concept. In synthetic proposition, the predicate is not contained in its subject. Immanuel Kant proposed that existence is not the predicate. Kant questions the intelligibility of the concept of a necessary being. He considers examples of necessary propositions such as triangle has three angles and rejects the transfer of this logic to the existence of God. First, he argues that such necessary propositions are necessarily true only if such a being exists. If a triangle exists, it must have three angles. The necessary proposition, he argues, does not make the existence of a triangle necessary. Thus, he argues that if the proposition X exists, is posited it would follow that if x exists, it exists necessarily. This does not mean that x exists in reality. Second, he argues that contradiction arises only when the subject and predicate are maintained, and therefore a judgment of non-existence cannot be contradiction as it denies the predicate. Kant then proposes that the statement God exists must be analytic or synthetic. The predicate must be inside or outside of the subject, respectively. If the proposition is analytic, as the ontological argument takes it to be, then the statement would only be cause of the meaning given to the words. Kant claims that this is merely tautology and cannot say anything about reality. However, if the statement is synthetic, the ontological argument does not work, as the existence of God is not contained within the definition of God. Ontological ethics can be applied to other disciplines such as research, sociology, and ethics. According to Michael Barnes, in educational research, Ontology refers to your worldview and this is essential because whether you know it or not, you have the power to choose your worldview or ontology, which affects how you see and understand the world. According to Katie Moon, you can use this also to help researchers recognize how certain they can be about the nature and existence of objects and they are researching. Philosophers use the concept of ontology to, to discuss challenging questions, to build theories and models, and to better understand the ontological ethics status of the world. Ontological ethics can benefit in many different ways, such as on how we make decisions in our life and how can we solve every problem in our everyday existence. Abortion What is abortion? Abortion is the termination of a pregnancy by removal or expulsion of an embryo or fetus. 
An abortion that occurs without intervention is known as a miscarriage or spontaneous abortion and occurs at approximately 30% to 40% of pregnancies. When delivery steps are taken to end the pregnancy, it is called an induced abortion or less frequency induced miscarriage. The unmodified word abortion generally refers for an induced abortion. The ontological abortion. Abortion, as an ethical issue, involves that sense, sense in which the fetus is a person to whom one has obligations. Beyond that, abortion involves other issues of various degrees of severity. The ontological abortion. Abortion, as an ethical issue, involves that sense in which the fetus is a person to whom one has obligations. Beyond that, abortion involves other issues of various degrees of severity. There are legal and economic conditions which compel women to continue an unwanted pregnancy or which limit resources for its termination. There are gynecological problems of perfecting techniques to reduce morality and morbidity and psychological problems with respect to the mental scale of an abortion. There are also sociological problems in so far as abortion can alter the birth rate and change the number of defective births as well as perhaps changing certain attitudes towards sexual activity including the use of contraceptives including the use of con contraceptives Furthermore, one must assess the significance of the change in the role of the physician implied by his now being not only the preserver but also the destroyer of human life. If it is resolved that the fetus is not a human person, there still remain unaddressed issues concerning the proper treatment of sub personal human animals. The taking of human life is the worst possible moral offense. The value of principle is the most important of the life. One must revert life and accept death. Definition of suicide. Killing. To put death slave deprived of life. Murder. Unlawful killing of one human being on another especially with malice. Suicide, unintentional taking of one's own life can involve both killing and taking one's life, but not considered civilly unlawful or criminally unlawful. Happens on one's own thoughts or feelings. What is theory? Theory is a rational type of abstract thinking about phenomenon or the results of such thinking. The process of contemplative and rational thinking is often associated with such processes as observational study of research. My own evaluation of the theory. Theory helps us to understand many aspects of our environment. Theory used to help to make us decision to explain behavior, aggressive behavior, and then we can see. A theory is well substantiated explanation of an aspect of the natural world that can incorporate mass, hypothesis, and facts. A theory not only explanation, no facts. It also allows scientists to make predictions of what they should if a theory is true. Theories may either be scientific or other than scientific. Questions about onophological ethics. What is death? Death is a permanent irreversible cessation of all biological functions that sustain a living organism. Question number two. How can we protect human life? First, we must speak for what we care about. 
Second, stand up against discrimination. Third, listen to others' stories. Fourth, volunteer or donate a contribution to a local or global organization. Question number three. Do you think death is inevitable? Yes, because we can't live forever and our aging process can't stop so death too. Question number four. Is there a morali morality of taking human life? No, because a human life is a crime and it is morally wrong if it if it costs of ill intention. Question number five. Why is human life is precious? Life is precious because it was given to us as a gift. The way people view and express themselves sexually is referred to as human sexuality. This may include biological, erotic, physical, mental, social, or spirit, spiritual feeling and behavior. It lacks a clear meaning because it is a broad concept that has changed with historical meanings over time. 